now the second complication is pots paraplegia now all this nonsense if it is going and pressing on the cord you will have cord symptoms that is the most grave complication and this complication is because of the inflammation and the inflammatory edema it is because of the pus granulation tissue sequestrum that is formed because of the death of the bone and uh, once the tissue has healed it heals with lot of fibrosis and if this fibrosis and the, all the healing consolidation happens within the neural canal you will have internal gibbous the compromise of the spinal canal that is called internal gibbous hence you can end up in a quartz paraplegia sometimes it so happens because of the end arteritis and vasculitis of the blood vessels which are supplying the cord you can end up in an infarction of the spinal cord and suddenly you, it, the, you have a picture wherein uh, it looks as if there is a transaction of the cord necrosis of the cord because of infarction uh, because of sudden vasculitis because of tuberculosis tuberculosis end arteritis permanent damage you know, there is no treatment even for that so you need to identify early and treat now there are two types of pots paraplegia one is early onset if it comes within two years from your detection unfortunate to say early two years is not early man so but unfortunately it is described that way early onset is less than 2 years late onset is more than 2 years from the time of your detection of pathology of tuberculosis in the spine now as we have described for tuberculosis of the vertebral bodies right initially the a pre destructive stage where there is only spasm in the early destructive phase where there is a disc uh, collapse or uh, uh, haziness of the disc early dist late destructive phase you have all these symptoms of destruction of the disc collapse of the vertebra and various uh, angular deformity kyphosis you, you can see there that is in the vertebral body when it comes down to paraplegia per se because of tuberculosis you have, you again have four types right the first type is negligible where the patient is not aware of the tuberculosis pathology affecting the cord patient will come walking but you once you examine the knee jerk it will be exaggerated so doctor will detect the pathology and this is the stage where you have to detect the pathology of tuberculosis paraplegia otherwise it will go into next stage where the diff treatment difficulties will come in okay so you have to always examine any backache patient right to see whether that fellow is suffering from tuberculosis with respect to these things upper motor neuron signs like babinski plantar and ankle clonus and hyperreflexia in the lower limb uh, reflexive sites like knee joint and ankle jerk okay that is in the early stage where the changes are negligible and this it is this phase you should be in a position to detect right not other phases first phase is the most important phase other phases anyhow they will patient will come and tell you in the second phase what happens is patient will have clumsiness in walking and spasticity here you have spastic paraparesis already set in it is a, it's called as mild variety next is moderate and next is severe in the moderate type you name it as spastic paraplegia where you have uh paraplegia is with respect to the motor symptoms where patient is not able to walk and uh, this is called paraplegia in extension okay paraplegia in extension where a patient is not able to walk and uh, you have complete loss of motor power but the sensory loss is only 50% that's why it is stage 3 in stage 4 see it is called as paraplegia in flexion patient will have lot of flexor spasms and the loss of sensation will be more than 50% this is all depending on the amount of compression on the cord you need not remember all these things initially patient will not be in a position to say only you will detect it in the second phase patient will come and say that i am not able to walk properly right that is called spastic paraparesis next phase spastic paraplegia third stage fourth stage is flexor spasms and a very severe stage which ultimately ends up in flaccid paraplegia nothing if you just lift the limb down limb up it will fall down like a wooden log that is what flaccid paraplegia but before that you have this paraplegia in flexion and severe flexor spasms before you end up in flaccid paralysis this is the these are grades of paraplegia you can see this is also graded by tuli right then uh, how do you manage how do you manage a case of tuberculosis of the spine you should diagnose it early early diagnosis is the best treatment that you can give and i told you two types of managements can come one is not to operate second is to operate when you will not operate when you don't have much of instability in the bone but still can manage the patient without surgery without causing much of the damage to the patient you can go for this non operative treatment then if there is instability in the vertebral bodies because of large amount large amount of destruction or else if you have a neurological symptoms which are a botheration factor for you 
right neurological symptoms are an indication for surgery and instability is an indication for surgery these are the two indications for surgery right then when things are not an indication for surgery you can as well treat it with conservative measures you have to do two things one is give ATT first start anti tuberculous treatment right second is give rest to that part so that it can heal okay how do you give the rest now you have to see to that the patient lies down absolute bed rest and no weight bearing should go through that pathological site if it, if it goes down it buckles and once it buckles you will have a deformity in the spine ultimately again it will end up in surgery because the deformity will cause neurological compromise and you will end up in surgery so rest anti tubercular treatment and once you have treated usually for spine we give rest for 2 months for hip and knee joint you give rest for 3 months 3 months right so what are the indications for surgery i told you a, a bony indication is an instability a spinal indication is a neurological deficit right so if there are if there is no neurology already if the patient is having a neurological deficit and you have treated with att and bed rest and it has not recovered then that is an indication for surgery after 3 weeks okay and the neurological complication if it develops as you are treating with conservative therapy then immediately you have to operate or if the patient is having cauda equina syndrome or rapid onset of paraplegia or any neurological deficit which is there which is not getting recovered even after giving att then you have to operate or new neurological injury or worsening of the neurological injury cauda equina syndrome you have to operate how do you operate simple the operation is nothing but decompression when it comes to spinal cord fixation when it comes to vertebral part so if it is unstable you have to fix if it is only a cord that is getting affected you have to decompress the best two modalities what are described in your textbooks are costo transversectomy you go to that vertebral body what uh, at this in the, in the lateral position you give an incision like this go there resect the rib here and the transverse process there once you make a vent there the pus will come out the once the pus has come out it will not press in the, press on the cord that is called costo transversectomy but with this procedure you can't decompress the spine completely but the next procedure is anterolateral decompression you lay, you take some wedge of the bone of the anterolateral portion of the vertebral body as well this decompresses the spine but in this process of decompression if it becomes unstable you have to fix it anteriorly anyhow you have opened gone anteriorly you take the same rib okay and put between two vertebrae which is high up and lower down this acts as a rib graft anteriorly to stabilize the vertebrae earlier days they used to do and just leave it like that and ask the patient to lie down nowadays what these people are doing is they are going anteriorly and they resect all the dead tissue decompress if there is instability they come back okay and put pedicle screws in the above vertebra and below vertebra and fix it right anterior as well as posterior fixation that is all about tuberculosis of the spine right hmm. shall i continue this tuberculosis of the hip joint i think it's too much if you want i will finish off tuber it's very simple tuberculosis of the hip joint and tuberculosis of knee joint i can finish off in 10 minutes same pathology otherwise in the next class i have to again go into the details now let, let us finish if, finish off the tuberculosis of the hip as well as spine same pathology is same now let me go into the specificity of the tuberculosis of the hip joint what is specific about it the tuberculosis of the hip joint specifically affects the bony part of it and the tuberculosis pathology you can see starting of the pathology you can see either at the acetabular roof or at the epiphysis or at the babcock strangle in the neck or at the greater trochanter if it is there at the greater trochanter usually there will be greater trochanteric bursitis tubercular greater trochanteric bursitis if it is there in and around the metaphysis or epiphysis it will cause tuberculous arthritis so here you have two things tuberculous osteomyelitis tuberculous arthritis we are more bothered about tuberculous arthritis of the hip joint okay now what happens in tuber any arthritis i told you pus formation distension dislodgement uh, dislocation or subluxation or erosion of the articular surfaces ultimately ending up in ankylosis that is what is happening in tuberculosis how do those patients present to you again i told you cold abscess can present then and there itself and it can track around the nerves now there are various stages of the tuberculosis of the hip joint the stage one is the tuberculosis is there gone there and it is lodged in the synovium it is called as stage of tuberculous synovitis stage 1 here in the stage of tuberculous synovitis it is also called a stage of apparent lengthening because the hip is kept in the position where it can accommodate maximum amount of synovial hypertrophy and maximum amount of synovial fluid that is possible only in flexion abduction and external rotation right this is called as once there is an abduction the length looks more this is called apparent lengthening 
so initial stage stage of synovitis flexion abduction and external rotation it is called as stage of apparent lengthening that is stage 1 in stage 2 once once the synovium is eating away the cartilage now the adductor spasm will come into force and now the abduction will go and adduction will come once the limb is in adduction this looks shorter this limb looks shorter this is called as stage of apparent shortening and once this is happening in the stage 2 stage of early arthritis most often in these cases there might not be uh, destruction of the joint much but thing is the arthritic problem has started hence there is adduction deformity so it will be in flexion adduction and internal rotation and hence there will be apparent shortening in stage 3 stage of erosion and advanced arthritis there will be complete destruction of the joint space if you take an x ray and see the joint space is grossly narrowed in stage 2 the joint space may not be that much narrowed but in stage 3 the joint space is completely narrowed and you will have flexion adduction and internal rotation of the hip joint and there is another stage 4 that is not described here in stage 4 what is happening is the stage 3 plus there will be pathological dislocation or subluxation of the hip joint that is stage 4 is stage 3 plus pathological dislocation of the joint if these three stages of hip joint if you can know in tuberculosis there ends the matter that is the tuberculosis of the hip joint how do the patients present to you the patients of tuberculosis of the hip joint present to you with what simple local symptoms constitutional symptoms constitutional symptoms are same but the local symptoms are first is pain in the hip joint but before that he will have limp so limp stiffness and pain in the hip joint are the most important uh, symptoms you should always look into and once you try to examine in one of the stages you will be examining so in the initial phase patient will be keeping in flexion abduction and external rotation you try to adduct it will not come you try to extend it will have pain okay so initially when there is synovitis there is limitation of terminal range of motion but once it goes into arthritis phase gross limitation of motion will be there because of intense muscle spasm patient will be just putting it like that as you see in septic arthritis right only jog of movements will be possible the investigations are same as you do it elsewhere for uh, tuberculosis but when you take a radiograph you have to take a chest x-ray also to see if at all there is a primary lesion when they take a radiograph of the hip joint there will be juxta articular osteopenia you should always remember this severe osteoporosis will be there in and around the hip joint there will be an erosion from the margins coming into the center and eating away of the cartilage so the marginal erosions will be there marginal haziness will be there initially later on if the joint is distended with pus you will have severe soft tissue swelling distended joint right and then there may be a cal- capsular distension and dislocation of subluxation which can be seen on x ray if all of this has drained out and pus is not there anymore and the di- articular cartilage is completely worn out now you see a joint without any articular cartilage joint space is completely narrowed down severe decrease in the joint space ultimately these two rough surface when they are together they'll become one they get married and they become one and you end up in a fibrous ankylosis these are all the radiographic changes you can see there are various types of radiographic changes as i have described this is one type where there is an increase in, uh, there is a severe decrease in the uh, bone density here if you can see this is a decrease in the bone density it's called as juxta articular osteopenia and there is his haziness of the margins of the acetabulum as well as the humeral head these are all the pictures of juxta articular osteopenia even this this okay